buildings and people, historic monuments and heritage of the modern era, conservation, management, education, and awareness raising, objects and traditions. Welcome to Holistic Heritage, a series of conversations about various aspects of heritage from Central and Eastern Europe. This monthly podcast is brought to you by the Europa Nostra Heritage Hub in Krakow, a newly established regional center of Europa Nostra, a pan-European federation of organizations involved in the protection, management and promotion of cultural and national heritage in 40 European countries. My name is John Beecham, and together with Katarzyna Jagodzińska, who is the head of the Krakow Heritage Hub, we will be hosting these conversations for you. For this inaugural episode, we take a look at the activities of the International Cultural Center in Krakow. This professional institution was established in 1991, soon after the political transformation in Poland. It specializes in the culture and heritage of Central Europe and grounds its activities of public diplomacy, research, education and communication in dialogue with partners from across the entire region. Our guests for this episode are Agata Wolsowska pavlik director of the ICC, and Professor Jacek Purchla, founder and previous director of the ICC for 27 years. We met during the European Cultural Heritage Summit in Venice, an annual celebration of European heritage organized by Europa Nostra. And why here? Well, the ICC has been a long-time member of Europa Nostra. Professor Jacek Purchla is its vice president, while Agata Wolsowska pavlik is a member of its council, while an international presence is of key importance for the ICC's programming. The ICC has been preoccupied with heritage of Central Europe since 1991 when it was established in the heart of Krakow. It has unrivaled expertise in the region with regard to various aspects of cultural heritage. Agata, I would like to ask you the first general question. How would you characterize today's interest and knowledge of the region in the region? Well, it's for me, it's quite difficult to assess if the knowledge of the region in, within the region is being graced or um, what, what's, what is the level. But I hope and even I am convinced that the ICC adds a kind of a meaningful approach, meaningful uh, break uh, to, this, to this process of raising awareness of, of Central Europe about itself. I think this process was quite well, natural that after political change at the turn of 80s and 90s, when Central Europe regained its independence and democratic values, most of the countries of Central Europe were kind of fascinating by the West. They were fascinating by the values of capitalism, by the need to, to get to the level of life of Western Europe. We were somehow, we were freed from the core set of the communism, of the lack of free speech, for example, and that created our kind of uh, tension or trend to look to the West. And somehow we forget about the neighbors. And I'm sure you will ask this question, uh, when you will ask this question, uh, Professor Purchla, who is the founding father of the ICC, will uh, mention this one sentence. When uh, this time when the ICC was created, Poland had three neighbors. And soon after that, there were seven new members. This was kind of a sleeping revolution. I mean, we simply uh, we noticed that, but we didn't pay much attention to that, except what we were doing at the ICC, but still it was not, the, let's say, a general idea. And now now it's more than 30 years, and I think that our we can see it also while uh, looking at the activity of, of different, of other institutions in Poland, that uh, this looking at, uh, at your neighbors, looking at the heritage and art of not those far away, but those quite close, is let's say it's bigger and bigger and that the interest is, 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 is higher and higher. So I think, yes, it changes. It depends, of, of course, always from the standpoint. And we stand in Krakow, which has this different kind of approach to, to Central Europe, to the south, but also to the north. Krakow was a Hanseatic city. And somehow I think 
Krakow not being a capital has this uh, kind of a particular role in creating more tight ties with the culture and heritage of, of our neighbors. Also, maybe a bigger responsibility, let's say symbolic responsibility. I also can observe that in many countries in Central Europe, this interest is growing. And if in the past we received this kind of feedback that, why are you so interested in, in us? Now this kind of answer, this kind of reaction has changed and we did not uh, explain it. We needed to explain that. You mentioned ties with the neighbors. So various initiatives of the ICC, the conferences, the exhibitions, publications, to name just the major ones, are often based on collaboration with partners within the region. Could you say a few words about the partnerships, about those leading points on the map of Central and Eastern uh, Europe that the ACC is collaborating and jointly producing the narrative of Central European heritage? Well, I am afraid we don't have that much time, but indeed we are trying to keep, first of all, all the ties, all the friendships, all the partnerships that Professor Purhla was so engaged in, in in the 90s and then later on. My succession was quite uh, soft, so simply I could learn and observe how he does that. Making those ties, we try to build the ties with all the big cities of, of our region, with the institution there, with particular people involved in cultural heritage preservation, I don't know, ICOM members, ICOM members, different kind of NGO, but also, of course, state-owned institution. It's an ongoing job because, well, different generations, there is a new, new generations are coming, which in fact has completely different approach because they didn't experience uh, the, the communist uh, past. So they are simply without any kind of complexes. And I think this is very, very promising. Uh, I would like to ask you, uh, Professor Purkla, I mean, the ICC, so it was created in 91, but obviously the concept of uh, cultural heritage has been around for, for uh, a, a lot longer. The approach of the ICC towards cultural heritage, I mean, how has it changed uh, over the decades since the centre was created? One should emphasize at the beginning that heritage is us, is the people, it is our memory, our choice, our identity. And it is this uh, fundamental difference between the 19th century concept and the notion of a monument and the concept of culture heritage, which I think is making its real career since the turn of the 80s and the 90s all over the world, which means that initiating the center, we were really at the beginning of this very spectacular career, of this very approach towards the past needed for the future. And as the International Cultural Center is concerned, I understand that on the one hand side, and it was beautifully described by Agatha, we were very much uh, focused on the notion and concept of Central Europe, let me please just remind that uh, the notion of Central Europe was instrumental in the 70s, in the 80s, among the intellectuals in Budapest, in Prague, in Warsaw, like Georgi Konrad, Milan Kundera, Czesław Miłosz as well, emphasizing that we, belonging to the West, are left on the eastern side of the borderline. And it was the starting point, of course the question how to live together with your neighbor. As Agatha rightly mentioned, uh, those three neighbors, they have disappeared. I mean, Soviet Union, Czechoslovakia, and GDR, and those seven new countries surrounding Poland, it was the first challenge to start the dialogue, but also to discover the neighbor. And it is, I understand, one side of the story. But I'm economist by training, and to me, what was essential concerning my discussions with the friends, the colleagues from the art history sector, that heritage is not the ivory tower. 
is a potential for the future development. And I think that we used to be quite pioneering, developing and promoting this very way and sense. It is why uh, this uh, research project, Heritage Counts for Europe, has been also produced or co-produced by the center. And I understand that it is something quite important that it was not just uh, a matter of international dialogue, but it was also, and it is still, a matter of the promotion of this philosophy through Heritage Academy, for example. So we are producing uh, new generations of heritage activists uh, having a very modern approach, quite uh, contrasted to the traditional understanding of the mission of conservators, for example. So it is not just a matter of this huge potential we have accumulated in Poland concerning conservation, reconstruction, but it is just a challenge. How shall we manage today, in Krakow, for example, with those new pressures, like over-tourism, like uh, ecology, like transportation, and so on, and so on, and so on. I think that it is, to my understanding, the greatest value of the center, that we, the people of the center, are ready as missionaries to promote, to transfer, to share uh, with different parts of the society, in Poland, but also internationally, with those achievements of our new way of holistic approach towards heritage. And on the back of what you were saying, Professor Purkula, I'd like to ask, I mean, what is the biggest achievement, in your opinion, of course, of the ICC in raising awareness uh, on the concept of cultural heritage, both locally in Krakow and in the international context, as you're saying? It is, to me personally, the most complicated question and answer. Uh, but I understand that what is for sure that at the main square of the royal city of Krakow, we have the address now where uh, one can prove that those more than 30 years' time of our dedication to heritage issues is now, day and night, developing uh, different forms of promoting, I mean, education, exhibitions, publications, and also the staff of the, of the center itself is the value. I understand that our modern approach has been simply recognized and adopted by several ministers of Poland responsible for culture. So now our way, our approach, quite pioneering in the 90s, is for many something, I'm not saying obvious, but something practical, especially versus our uh, membership within the European Union. So we've been, once again, quite ahead, preparing also new generation of people responsible for heritage to those new challenges. The International Cultural Center has been operating for over three decades, and the scope has always been Krakow, Poland, Central, Euro Central Europe, and international global. Agata, could you tell us about the major plans for the future within any of those scopes? Well, we are trying now on the, just being very precise and short, we are working on several, uh, let's say, directions. We work on the Romanian direction. We work on Estonian direction. We were recently very active on the Lithuanian one. We, of course, maintain the cooperation with Ukraine, preparing next year the, the exhibition with uh, Odessa. And uh, also, which is, I think, uh, kind of characteristic for us, we are trying to show a, a more panoramic view on Central Europe. So we are working on the a picture of post-war architecture, not just in Poland, but in broadly understood Central Europe. And I think that in general, our interest 
is uh, moving from the first half of uh, 20th century to the second half of the 20th century because now this part of our past needs better recognition and interpretation. And we were very much concentrated on the first half of the 20th century, like 10, 15 years ago. But now our interest is more targeted at the second half of 20th century because we think that more or less 70 years is the time for some kind of evaluation of this epoch. We are having this conversation in Venice on the occasion of uh, Europa Nostra's uh, 60th anniversary and the European Heritage Summit. Um, I mean, how does the uh, ICC fit in to the international activities of Europa Nostra and vice versa? What does this European presence give the ICC? I wonder what should I say. I understand that at the moment we are the integral part of the organization and even more organization which is now pan-European needs Kraków, needs the International Culture Center, not just as a laboratory of our new approach, new philosophy towards heritage, but also the place which has know-how and knowledge concerning the specificity of the region. I should repeat once again that the notion of Central Europe this very part of the continent where political borders used to be changed much faster than culture one. The part of the continent where it is better not to start to discuss the issue of the borderline. This very know-how, this very knowledge, uh, we are now uh, selling, so to speak, to uh, our friends in Europa Nostra, not just promoting the region, but also trying to understand better the nature of European civilization. Thank you very much for the conversation and goodbye. And with that, we bring this episode to a close. You can find out more information about the Krakow Heritage Hub and Europa Nostra by checking the show notes to this podcast. Also, please remember to like, share and subscribe. Many thanks for listening and until next time. Bye-bye.